Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. Remember this boom lift? Yeah, it won't retract at horizontal when it's fully extended, even after doing the boom rebuild. And in this video, I'm going to try to fix that. Sometimes you get to buy a new tool. So this is a hydraulic test kit. Three hoses, three gauges, and a whole bunch of fittings to fit different setups. This is a cheap kit that I bought on Amazon. I'm sure it's made in China, nothing special about it, but it's way better than the one I had, which was no kit at all. We're gonna go look at the lift and we're gonna figure out how the pressure settings are on the extension and retraction. Can I make this thing retract? Before we go do it though, there is something interesting about that cylinder uh, that's worth mentioning. Here's a cross section of our hydraulic cylinder. This is the big 26 foot long uh, telescope cylinder that I rebuilt. Well, it has a three inch rod on it, three and a half inches to the barrel. That would be around 75 millimeters and 90 or something here. It's all about the square inches of surface area, which is what determines the force here. So if you do the square inches on the end of this piston, pi r squared, do the math, you come out to 9.6 square inches. That's 62 square centimeters. So that is the surface area that it has to extend that rod. Now, when you retract, the rod gets in the way. The oil is here under pressure, it's pushing in all directions, and it's pushing on the piston, but only right there. It can't push on the piston where the rod is. So it's just pushing there and there, and of course it's 3D, but the rod takes up most of that space. So when you do the math on the area of that rod, it's a three inch, it comes out to 7.1 square inches. So that rod subtracts from the full area of the barrel. So what that means is on the retraction side, you subtract those two, you have only two and a half square inches of surface area for the oil to act on to generate that retraction force. The designers compensated for this because when they set the pressures, telly in, you're supposed to adjust the pressure to 3000 PSI. When you're telly out, you adjust it to 1500 PSI. So there's half of the pressure being applied when you are extending than when you are retracting. And that's important because you don't wanna overstress those chains. This side at 3000 PSI would have enough force to be able to damage those chains. You don't want that. So when you're extending out, you've got 9.6 square inches, but you're at lower pressure. You just multiply those two and you get 14,400 pounds, 6,500 kilograms. So that's how much force you generate at peak to extend the telescope cylinder. Now, when you're retracting, you've only got two and a half square inches, but we're at double the pressure, 3000 PSI, you do the math, it comes to 7,500 pounds. So it's just over half, 3,400 kilograms that you're pulling in with. And uh, obviously, once those booms fully extend and they start flexing, you've got a, an awful lot of friction there that we need to overcome. But if I'm not at 3000 PSI, then I'm not at 7,500 pounds. And you know maybe I'm at 2,500. Well, that would be losing something like 15%, a thousand pounds less. So yeah, we need to go check these pressures and see what's going on with that thing. I've got a gauge that's got 3,000 about right in the middle. Gauges are more accurate in the middle of their range, and it's connected to a quick connect. I'm over to my hydraulic compartment, and that is the quick connect that I need to hook to to see what's going on with this thing. Seems like that should go on there. A few moments later. All right, I figured it out. This is not the right quick connect for these connections. It's funny because it really looks like it ought to go on there, but obviously it does not. So that means I have to go to the hydraulic shop and buy the correct quick connect. It's Sunday, can't do it today. The hydraulic shop is an hour away. I hate that stuff. And I'm jealous of you guys because you're going to get to see this like now. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. 
That's the exact same quick connect because the hydraulic shop did not have a quick connect for this style uh, in stock. They said this is an outdated test port and their suggestion to me was to change it to this test port, which this quick connect does fit. It was either that or nothing um, and wait for trying to find this. I did find online a quick connect that I think would fit this, but it was like 50 some bucks. I was able to get this with a couple adapters because I'm not sure what the threads are behind there uh, for 20 and I can do it today. So that was kind of a no brainer. The only thing is I have to take that off and I'm probably gonna be making a mess, but you know, that's what you do, especially when you're working on hydraulics. Not dumping oil out yet. That's good. It'd be nice if this thing would just uh, drip a little bit and that'd be it. This would be nice if that container would stay there. Whoa. Come on now. Things don't go that easy. All right, eyeballing it, I would have thought it would have been this 3 8 adapter, but my eyeballs were wrong. That's why I got a couple. <laughs> Turns out I didn't need the adapter goes right on there. All right, so I've got some thread sealant here. Really thought this was gonna be tricky to get on here. So I thought this thing was gonna be spraying everywhere. This is high pressure thread sealant that's compatible with hydraulics. Better than using Teflon tape. I'm not used to things going easier than expected on this lift. Surely it'll throw something at me. Check that out. Hmm. So Bouge RV is the sponsor of this video. And yes, this is another power station, but this is a very different use case. This is more like your, your fun, convenient power station. I mean, it's, you know, I wouldn't use this as a power backup for your house, but man, going camping, going out on the boat, going on a picnic or whatever, this is pretty cool. It's one kilowatt hour of storage. It'll put out 1200 watts. And the real star of this show is this refrigerator and freezer. This can be both. This thing draws a maximum of 60 watts, which is a cr crazy low number for a refrigerator. You can run it off of a 12 volt outlet from your car. Obviously you can run it off of this. I ran it off of this in the shop here for 24 hours and this went down 50%, which amounts to like six cents worth of electricity. This thing's really efficient. Yeah, I see this thing, uh, this thing getting used quite a bit. Got a little storage compartment there. And if you want it to be a freezer, you just turn it down. Yeah, this is a neat little setup. Let's see what else that thing can do. It doesn't start up quite as fast as it would if it was plugged into the wall. Try it on a piece of oak. Wow, I really didn't think it would do that. All right, I'm gonna push it hard. I would expect that would overload this thing, but let's see. I'm impressed. That little unit running a circular saw that well, hmm, it actually has some use to it too. So thanks to Bouge RV for sponsoring this video. I think this thing is gonna get a lot of use in my future. Not right now though, got more work to do. It's nice when you have the right fitting. All right, first I'm just gonna start the engine and I'm gonna run the hydraulics a little bit, just make sure I don't have a massive leak or something here. All right, so I'm gonna hit telescope in. I did not have any leaks. Tell 
telescope in. 2400. It's too low. I'm happy to see that. This is all I could get from the service manual, and it doesn't exactly match what I have here, and I'm a little confused by that. So there's two valve blocks on this. This is the electrically actuated one. You can see the little electrical connections there. So that's this valve block up here. These are proportional valves that basically, if you move the stick further, things move faster. Uh, I know this one is lift, one is swing, and the other one is drive. Um, so that you can drive slowly versus full speed. And these are just like on off. So when you hit telescope, you just hit, you know, out or in and it just goes. You can't adjust the speed. Here's a closer look at this valve block. There's four valves. Each one controls a different function. And I don't know which is which yet. You can see that these two have this extra block on here. That allows a pressure relief valve and adjustment that's specific to that function. This one right here doesn't have any adjustments. It's just on and off. You can't adjust the pressure relief. They're all on and off, but there's no pressure relief adjustments. Well, this is a line that I just replaced, and I know this goes out to the basket, and there's two functions out there that I think these are. One of them, I think, is to rotate the basket, and the other one, I think, is to tilt the basket. Assuming, you know, they have the telescope on the left in their picture, and then steering on the right. So I would bet that that is steering, and this is telescope. And there are a number of ways I could do this. I could try to trace the lines. That looks like a big pain. When I telescope, it is going to send power to this lead here or this lead here. So basically I can hook it a multimeter up to that and check for 12 volts and then hit the telescope function and that should tell me if this is the right control. And then I can probably narrow it down to, because if it's telescope in is this one versus telescope in this one, and then I can decide which one of those to adjust. How's that for a long explanation? I might be able to do this without starting the engine. I've got the key and the ignition on. Let's telescope out. Nothing. Telescope in. Nothing. Hmm. Let's go ahead and start it and uh, we'll try it like that. Hmm. Maybe it's the other one. Okay, it's not that one. Both functions worked and I have this wire disconnected. So clearly that is the steer control. Let's just do that one. And you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna unplug both of them. So whatever function this serves will not function now. And uh, so I should not see any telescoping when I hit that function. Yeah, I wasn't thinking here. All I needed to do was unplug one of the valves and see which function quit working. Now let's see, maybe it will do it when uh, the engine's not running. So telescope in, nothing, out, 12 volts. Sweet. So I am on the telescope out side right now. So I need to adjust it on the other side. We were just on this one and it was telescope out. And this would be the telescope in pressure relief, which I need to adjust. So let's see if we can do that. So hopefully this is just a jam nut here and I just have to back this off a little bit. Oh, wow, not even stuck. Okay. I wonder how much I move it. I think I would probably screw it in and I don't want to go too far. Let me go in half a turn. So that's a quarter. That's a half. It amazes me that all these old components, even after all this time, continue to work with a little help, but still. All right, so we've turned it in a half turn. Let's check our pressure. All right, telescope in. Didn't move much. All right, I'm gonna do another half turn. Okay, telescope in. A little higher, not much. Well, that's the same. And the same again. 
huh. Since the pressure wasn't changing, uh, I felt like I was missing something or doing something wrong, so I decided I better stop and think things through. So I've been scratching my head for several hours and sifting through diagrams and schematics and figuring out what all this stuff is. Quite challenging actually, so mainly I need to know what all these different valves do in order to work on this thing. And because uh, the manual just tells tells you to, oh, well, just the main pressure relief. And it's like, well, which one's that? And the only way you can tell is by tracing the hydraulic schematic. Like, basically, I found the hydraulic pump. It has three lines coming out of it. One of them goes to the high drive dump. One of them goes to this EAR section. One of them goes, you know, to the aux pump and traced all those lines. It took quite a long time, but I now know what everything is. I labeled mine with paint marker, which would be a semi-permanent solution. Hey engineers, why aren't these things just labeled? That would make this all so much easier. Get a little metal ID tag and put it behind one of the jam nuts on each valve. Done. Sequence valve, relief valve. This is the pressure reducing valve. This is the dump valve, high drive dump, two speed select. I'll go ahead and show them all because this might help somebody uh, that is the slave cylinder relief valve and then we've got basket rotate steer that is a uh, platform level the third one there and then the fourth is telescope and then these are the proportional valves these are the ones that uh, move differently depending on how much you move the stick in other words the voltage to it is regulated so you've got drive lift and swing now that I have all that figured out, what I have discovered is that my pressure is low. The pressure on telescope end should be 3000 and it's 2400. But when I disconnect telescope and hit that function, what it then does is it sends pressure through this line to this valve block. The pressure has nowhere to go because this is not doing anything. In other words, this is not opening up a path to the telescope cylinder for it to flow. So what it does is it goes through this relief valve and the pressure I'm getting there is 2600 and that should be 31. So like I'm like 500 PSI low here. I don't tend to think it's the pump. Uh, it could be, but the, I mean, they hear the relief valves squealing. So the relief valves are set too low and I need to turn them up. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is try to get this to 3100. Oh, there's one other thing I've learned. I am not a hydraulic mechanic. I've learned that resoundingly. So I'll take a crack at explaining what's really going on here in this tangle of hoses and valves. And so the way this system works, the pump is always pumping, but if you're not doing a function, it ends up returning to tank. So the main incoming line from the pump is this one, and it comes down here, goes through this sequence valve, and that's the main pressure relief valve right there. But this is the dump valve. So coming out of that pressure relief valve, this valve, allows flow through it on this line, which goes up here. It comes down here and right into the tank, right there. So this is basically constantly venting the system and allowing flow. I'm simplifying things a little bit here. The sequence valve is also involved, but the principle of how it operates is the same. So the pump isn't sitting there working and working, it's just pumping and dumping, hence the dump valve. When you activate a function, you send 12 volts to this, this valve closes and it allows pressure to build in the system. And this is gonna then pressurize this valve block. This line over on the other side of the machine is also attached to the pump. So this line's gonna get pressurized and it's gonna allow a function to occur. You know, basically when you hit the telly button, it sends 12 volts to the function on this and the function on this. And that's what allows hydraulic pressure to build and for it to do what you want and then when you let off this is going to close and this is going to open and the flow is going to go to tank so the high pressure fluid comes into the valve block and there's a there's a line all the way down here a high pressure fluid line and the only way out is through a function or through the pressure relief and the way out is the other side of the valve Let's see if i can show you here this hose right here goes right over to tank. So knowing that, the way I can pressurize this valve is by hitting a function. That's gonna close the dump valve, but if I hit that function, it's going to 
try to do that function. But this is Tele in. If I disconnect that wire, now when I hit Tele in, that valve is not going to respond. So pressure is going to build, and it's going to build in this valve block, and the only way it can get out is going to be there. That pressure is set lower than the main relief pressure. But if that pressure ever fail, the main relief would, would protect. Now let's check the pressure, see where we are at uh, with this function. I'm gonna hit Tele in, and we're gonna send all the fluid through this valve. All right, I'm doing Tele in, but remember the telescope function's disconnected. 2600. Just to show you, I will do it now with the telescope function connected. So now the function is connected and the valve will actually do its thing, but the cylinder doesn't have anywhere to go, so we're going to hit peak pressure. Did you hear how the squeal is very different? It's a different relief valve. And one more time on the relief valve for the whole valve block. So we need to turn that up. Oh man, wrong size wrench. Adjustable to the rescue. tools. All right, I'm going to have to drive this thing up to my shop. I thought I was going to just come up here and adjust a single valve, but uh, yeah, this, <laughs> this is just a little more involved than I was, uh, was ready for. So I'll look at it and we'll see if we made any difference and then we'll come back tomorrow. We're losing daylight now. Seems unchanged. Yeah, I think the adjustment screw and the nut were frozen together and I need to get a thin wrench and get to where I can really work that screw loose. I just don't have the right tools right now. So we'll see you back tomorrow. One up on the island is sitting on eggs. That's the male in the water. Making those geese. <laughs> okay, now hopefully with this. Uh, <laughs> Man. Well, that's nice. That wrench just dropped down behind the gas tank. <laughs> I knew she was going to throw me a curveball. A magnet to get my wrench back. I'm going to try a pair of vice grips on there. Let's see, I'm going to be turning it in. So we want to go this way. The adjustment is just a flathead screw. to the jam nut. There it moves a little bit. So here I turned it in half a turn. Let's go check the pressure again real quick. So the tele function's not hooked up. This is the relief valve on that valve body. Oh, well the engine needs to warm up more, but it definitely went higher. Okay, 
All right, well, that's, that's progress. I'm going to let the engine warm up. I'm also going to change this gauge. I want to do a different gauge and just verify. Never used this gauge before. Let's make sure it's right. All right, I have a different gauge. Yeah, it looks like 2700. So it did go up, that's good. I'm gonna reconnect the function because I got 2400 on the other gauge with this. So now this is the relief valve on the actual control valve and it should be 2400 if these gauges agree. That's about the same, so good. Um, I'm happy with the gauges. I reviewed the footage and the last time I actually checked this, it was more like 2450. So the gauges agree almost exactly. All right, so I'm gonna take a paint pen and put a little mark here so that I know where I was. Let's see if I can turn that thing. Half a turn in, there we go. It's a little easier. Man. I think that thing is all the way in. It's just not a <laughs> in a position where I can adjust it effectively. That's about half a turn. Let's see what we get. Whoa! Too much. Let's back that off. Man, I only went up half a turn. Thank goodness I didn't uh, max it out because uh, I was actually thinking about doing that for a second because I didn't seem to be getting my, very far. So it peaked at 3300 and it looked like it was going to back down a little bit. This was probably the main pressure relief kicking in here. So I backed it off a quarter turn. So this is a quarter turn advanced from where it was when I started. And this is where we are. So I need just a tiny bit more. So that little tiny turn did this. Ooh, look at that. That is just under 3100. I'll leave it there. Let me see if I can get the uh, the control to 3,000 now. So just to help me keep track, I'm going to put a spot on this one too. Red on the other side. So let's see. Loose. Maybe it wouldn't be that way. Way in half a turn. If you're wondering when I'm turning that thing in, all I'm doing is pushing a spring against a check valve and making it harder to open that check valve. All right. All right, I turned it in all the way. It won't go anymore. It's right against the jam nut. That's as, as far as it's going in and it has not changed the pressure. Um, I mean, I might have come up 50 PSI from when I started this whole thing, but uh, I doubt it's going to do what I want it to do, but we'll try. My assessment of that is that I have a bad relief valve, which I think, I think you just unscrew this thing, buy a new one, screw it in, and I think you're good to go. If not, I wonder how much this control valve costs. That's probably pricey. I don't know. If it's cheap, I'll fix it. If it's not, I won't. And just real quick, when I was working on this, I had the basket fully extended in there to like work up underneath the far side there. and. Whenever the ground is soft, being able to reach to maximum is helpful because then you're not leaving treads or you're minimizing how many treads you're leaving. So I do want to be able to use this thing at full horizontal. I expect I'll be doing that in the future. I'm going to telescope all the way. I don't expect it to be able to retract once I hit the end. But at the end, that's when I can check the pressure of the other valve, um, the extension valve. And I want to make sure that's at 1500, not too high. You know, it works fine. So I'm good with how it is, but I don't want it too high.
All right, this is Telly out. Whoa. It shouldn't be that high. And this is Telly in. Yep. So that's the same thing. But the Telly out is way too high. I had to think for a second here. Is it unsafe to do this again? And the answer is no. What I'm pushing against right now is the spacer that is inside the cylinder because it's fully extended. All the seals and hydraulic hoses and everything can easily handle 2800 PSI. It would be a problem if I was pushing with the basket against something because then I could overload the chains. But just pushing on the spacer, this is not a problem. Okay, we're gonna fix that. So you might ask yourself, self, this one's getting up to 2800. That's too high. This one won't get high enough. Can you see that one? That one won't get high enough. Could I swap them? I assume I can adjust this one down, but at the very least, it's less than this one is. And if I can't adjust it down, then I'm gonna need to get a new one so that I can make it right. So that's what I'm gonna do. I wonder how much of a mess this is gonna make. Yeah, Oh, she's gonna leak. Leak a lot. Let me go get a container. Yeah, I think this is the oil between here and the telescope cylinder holding valve. That's an O-ring, okay. I heard that, but I didn't see it. That throws me for a bit of a loop here. All right, well, that is a broken O-ring, but I should have one that'll fit that. I mean, shouldn't there be like a pretty heavy duty spring in there? Yeah, let's take the bottom one off and see what we get there. This is the part I'm looking for. I mean, this is basically just a bolt that's threaded with a jam nut, pushes against that spring. Let's not lose any parts here. And then this spring applies pressure to the check valve and holds it closed until it gets to that spring tension. If I can get the spring out of here with a magnet. Whoa, that's not the spring. Did it fall out already? I heard something at some point. Maybe it's already out. Off camera, I looked underneath and used the magnet underneath as well. Couldn't find it. Better put this guy back where he belongs. Using the magnet all around that area. What the heck? The thing fell into the black hole. What in the world? Here's a useful trick for working in tight spaces. I put my phone on record and I stick it where I wish I could get my head and take a look, and then I can watch the video and see where it is. Do you see it? There it is. <laughs> Idiot. I don't, I don't know when that fell out. Being careful to keep them separate, I brought the two valves into the shop and measured them carefully and found really no differences between the two. Uh, this is the o-ring that was on there and I've measured its dimension. It's right around 95 thousandths, the old one and the new one. I think that's good. And this o-ring is not like not like an o-ring inside a hydraulic cylinder. It just needs to go down and get compressed. Maybe it could be a little smaller actually. Next size down. Yeah, same thickness. Let's see how this does. That looks good. Yeah, I like that enough that I'm going to go ahead and change this one too. Okay, o rings sorted. So it's adjusted all the way in. Let me see if I can. I want to take the uh, adjustment apart and see if maybe something is preventing it from adjusting further when it should. 
Good grief. Who tightened down that jam nut? You know, maybe it's just a weak spring. Doesn't feel any weaker than the other one. But it is old. The prudent thing to do is back it off a little bit. Because when I change it to the other side, who knows, maybe it'll have a uh, different clearance and give me a different pressure. I got them both cleaned up and ready to put back on. Okay, I just covered this up so that it wouldn't have any bugs or anything crawling in it while I was in the shop. So this is the one that was on the bottom. Yeah, if I match that right. Now we'll do the bottom one. All right, this is the one that was on top. I mean, sometimes you just need to trade positions. So in seeing how simple those things are, I've come to realize that while I'm adjusting the pressures, I can just leave that jam nut loose and get it where it wants to be. I've backed that one way off because I wanted it 1500. All right, I've got them both backed off and I've reconnected the telly function. Let's see where we are. Telly in. Telly out. Yeah, telly in just has no pressure. So let me turn that way up. Telly in, still nothing. Wow, well that's an undesirable result. I think there's something wrong with that block there because Telly out, I am all the way out. This is as low as it goes. And telly in, I'm all the way in. Doesn't make sense. Well, I figured it out. I'm an idiot. And that's the end. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs> but it's really obvious. If you want, pause the video and think for a second. And tell me what it is that I need to do to fix this. Don't assume anything. The mistake I made is I assumed because this electrically is the telly in, that this would be the relief valve for telly in. It's not. This is the relief valve for telly out. And that's why the telly out function was so high is because I adjusted it so high. This is the relief valve for telly in. I have it all the way out and that's why I'm not getting any pressure on telly in. The electrically, this is telly out. Hydraulically, this is telly in. So I've been adjusting the wrong valves and then checking the pressure on the wrong function and getting all confused. I've read the pressure adjusting procedure in the manual several times. It sure would have been nice for them to include that little bit of information. Or maybe that's something that any decent hydraulic mechanic would know. So I now focused on the bottom pressure relief valve for the telescope in, and I steadily adjusted it and kept checking the pressures. And before I knew it, I had it all the way in and I still didn't have any pressure. Well, it's not that simple. It seems that you have to adjust both of them sort of together. When I put the bottom one all the way in, I still wasn't getting any telescope pressure, but this one was all the way out. When I started turning that one in, I started getting some telescope in pressure. So it's like the two are, maybe there's a shuttle in between the two. I don't know. You kind of have to adjust them together. So I'm, I'm advancing slowly, like a quarter turn on both at a time, and let's see if I can get the pressures where they need to be. A lot of little tweaks.
is all the way in. Oh, here's out. Out is perfect. Oh, it did it. It's coming in. It's still low. I think I need a new spring in there. have success well kind of I wasn't able to get to the 3000 psi but it works so I'm okay with that I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look and see if I can get a new spring for this or maybe just I have to buy the whole valve I bet you it's gonna be cheap because there's nothing to it it's a turn in screw you know if it's 20 bucks 30 bucks I'll buy it and put it on there and get it right but um, yeah that was it my pressure was low and now it works how about that in my book, that qualifies as advanced hydraulics. That stuff has always intimidated me, and I'm really glad that I did it, because it's, it's really not that bad. Hydraulics is a lot like electricity. Valves are relays, and voltage is pressure. And there's a lot of, of correlations there, because you need a circuit. The, the fluid needs, you need pressure to go, but you also need a place for it to go too. So you have to complete the circuit, just like you do in electrics. So there you go, guys. Lift is done. It's freaking done. I hope you guys learned something. I've had a lot of fun with this, and you will definitely be seeing more of the lift in the future. And uh, don't worry, there are a couple things I could still work on on it, but I've got other projects I need to get into. Some that people keep asking me about because they've been seeing them in the background in some of the shots. And yes, those are on the way. So thanks for watching, see you on the next one. Not quite done here. Uh, I've got the boom lift up at the porch. We're doing a little painting. Well, you know that saying, if it ain't broke, keep fixing it till it is. I'm going to give it my best. So, um, <laughs> no, I was looking, let me show you. I was looking to buy just the pressure relief valve. JLG doesn't sell it. I might be able to go to a hydraulic shop and buy one, probably. But, I don't know, the length of the spring and everything, all that's got to be specced. I don't know. I'm not a hydraulic mechanic. I don't know how easy that's going to be. It occurred to me, all I need is 250 PSI. I need that spring to push a little bit harder. Just a little bit. I'm gonna shim it. For some folks, that's a dirty word. Shimming hydraulics is something that a lot of people, you'll hear bad stuff about it, and, and rightfully so. What they're generally referring to is when people like farmers, trust me, I know, want their tractor to lift more. And they don't have any gauges or anything. They just go, there's a main pressure relief valve on their system. They open it up, they shove some washers in there, screw it all back together. Well, now the spring's tighter and the check valve's harder to open and the pressure goes up. And sure, their tractor will lift more, but they're running over pressure now. That's a very different thing than what I'm doing. I'm under pressure and I'm trying to get to spec. And so shimming in this case should be fine. I'm not a hydraulic mechanic. Any hydraulic mechanics out there disagree, please let me know uh, if there's a problem with this, but I cannot imagine what it would be. Let me pop this thing off of here and we're gonna go make a shim. I just need a little bit more, just a little bit more. It's funny, the top one leaked a lot more. All right, let me go take this into the shop. We're gonna make a little tiny shim that goes up inside this that the spring can have a little additional compression. Basically, I just need a washer that will go down in here. And this measures 402. So I think 400 thou would be perfect. It's the outside of the spring that pushes on it. It doesn't have to have a, uh, a center on it because that's not doing anything. So another thing I want to do, I don't want to put a big honking shim in here because um, that just puts someone in the future of it, a higher risk of overpressuring this thing. I just want it to be able to reach what it should and a little bit more. Let's see, I've got 230 thou there. So I'm going to now loosen the jam nut. I'm going to turn it out one turn 
and see how much that moves. And that's about the thickness I'm going to want. Because I mean, I only need 250 PSI. Okay, it's loose now, so that's one turn out. Now we're getting 260. Wow. That is just not much. I would hate to do 30 thousandths though and then have it just not be quite enough and have to do it all again. I, I was expecting it to be more like 50 or 60 with one turn, maybe even 100. It's just right around 30 thou. Well, let me see what I got. All right, here's my answer. Just a little washer. That's 45 thousandths, so that should be a turn and a half. Now, it's too big. I need to make it 400 thou. It's 505. So this is a piece of half inch stock. So that was 80 thousandths, so I should have about 20 more to go. And 423, so I got 23 to go. That's where I was. That was 10. This is 13. <laughs> See how we did here? Huh. 400. Looks like maybe half, half a thou under. I'll take it. Now, I'm definitely being way more anal about this than I need to be, but um, I don't know. I feel better doing it, doing it the best that I can rather than just throwing something in there. I'm deliberately doing all this abrasive work away from my pressure relief valve because you don't want any abrasives getting in your system. It's like the worst thing you could do. Chew up all your seals. Ugh. Because we all know how easy it is to get those cylinders out and rebuild them. It goes in the top part. It does not want to go into the bottom. This thing must narrow down as it goes in. Probably by like a thousandth or something. Shoot. All right, it doesn't need to be that perfect. I'll throw it on the lathe and we'll, we'll pop another thou off of it. Now, let's see what we got. And the answer is a lousy cameraman and a washer that fits. I think we're ready to reinstall this thing and make this lift do what it's supposed to do. Except it's already doing that. You know, I'll keep fixing it until it's broken. Actually, before I put this thing back in, I want to set this to a reasonable point to start. So all the way in, like it is now, is where it was. And... 30 thousandths is what we determined one turn was. So I've added a turn and a half. So now essentially I am a turn and a half in from where it was. So that I think would be the pressure I was at. And obviously I don't want to, I want some cushion here. So I'm going to go another turn out. So right there, I think would be a reasonable starting point. And just for safety, let's do another half. I don't want to get in there and, <laughs> overpressure it, but uh, it's got a relief valve on it. Forget that half. It's got a 3100 uh, PSI relief valve that I just set, so it's protected. 
Yep, let's go throw it in there and see what we got. I sure hope no hydraulic mechanic is screaming at the screen right now. Don't do it, don't do it. Because <laughs> I'm going to do it. All right, so Telly in. 2100, it's a good place to start. We're a quarter turn in. 350, I did another quarter turn. 550, another quarter. 700, we're gonna make it. I did a little less than a quarter. 800. Just shy of 2,900, we've never been that high before. That was probably less than an eighth of a turn. Ooh, this has gotta do it. Oh, just a little bit more. I think we're calling that good. So I need to get that jam nut. Beautiful. So let's extend all the way out. All right, we are all the way out. Here's our extend. 1500, right where it belongs. Let's get horizontal. And we'll look at the pressures while it does it. But I am quite confident that this is going to retract. Let's see. It did, but it went all the way up to 2,900, man. It needs every bit of that pressure. Let's do it again. And here we retract. All right, I do like that result. I'm pretty confident now that even with a load in the basket, it'll retract. It's got a new cylinder, good seals, no bypassing, and it's at the right pressure. Well, how about that, guys? That actually worked, and uh, yeah, I didn't need to do that, but that was fun, and it's pretty gratifying. It's really gratifying, in fact. I'm glad I did it. is still over there sitting on her eggs right in the middle of that island
Let me know if something bites that, would you? <clears throat> oh, and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.